if I cannot play Root, there are some games that definitely give me some vibes that kind of fulfill a little bit of what I'm looking for in a game of Root, whether it's negotiation, um, dudes on a map, card management, uh, the, the basic design philosophy of the game as a whole, um, or the cutthroat nature of the game. So the first one is going to be the Game of Thrones, the board game. Now, the Game of Thrones, the board game, the asymmetry in that game, there is some pretty good asymmetry. And I've been mostly playing the actual like Steam version of the game. And I also have it on my phone. Um, and I played it a couple of times on there. The All of the different houses that you play, they each have different cards that you'll use for combat that all have different varying abilities. The positions that you start on are very, very asymmetric. The game itself does not work in any way like Root, but what the vibe kind of gives me is that there is a ton of negotiation in the game, and I like that it has some mechanical ways to alliance with each other. Uh, it's, it's a very, very good game. It also promotes a lot of backstabbing which I find Root also does a lot so um, Game of Thrones the board game is kind of the first one that I would say definitely give that a look if you are looking for something that honestly is a, a lot easier to get into than Root from like a rules wise perspective and still has kind of those asymmetric factions asymmetric starting positions um, but you know a war game um, it also lasts quite a bit and runs up to six players so could be a good option the next one I have on here is Crescent Moon. This is a game by Osprey Games that is a four or five player game. Um, and it is a highly asymmetric game um, that essentially that part in Root where everybody is entangled and all of the pieces are like intermixed. Um, this game is like right out of the gate, the very beginning of the game, everybody kind of starts like super, super close to each other and kind of in each other's business. And by like turn two, everybody is literally in each other's business. So there, I, one of the things that I love most about the game is that uh, like the spatial puzzling of it is really fun because you can build a building on there and have like control over that region. But having control over a region isn't the same as having influence over it. So a different faction could influence a hex, whereas another faction could just be ruling it with its warring pieces. And all of the factions in the game are, like I said, extremely different. I actually have a really detailed video and a breakdown of how the game works. So I'll go ahead and link that uh, down below or you can also click up above. Um, but yeah, that's Crescent Moon. It is more of a historical game in theme, um, but it's not based on any particular period. It's just kind of like a nice, beautiful um, image or reflection of the time period uh, and I would highly recommend it. It is one of it's one of the games that's like really stuck in my collection as something that I really, really enjoy. Super asymmetric. Uh, obviously, that's going to be kind of a theme coming up here. All right. So the next game is really not a lot like Root. Um, so this one might kind of lose some of you, but it is called John Company. Now, this is another game designed by Cole Worley, the designer of Root. So in a lot of ways, there are some aspects that just kind of from a design philosophy perspective feel kind of like Root and scratch the itch of playing the game. The negotiation in John Company is like second to none. It is insane negotiation. Also, the asymmetric starting positions in the game are kind of an interesting puzzle to figure out because you're all kind of taking part of John Company, um, which is uh, is a pretty, pretty divided company. I mean, this is definitely not a good thing to be a part of, but the game does talk a lot about that. It is a very tough concept. Um, I've talked about it a couple of times. This game is definitely not a theme for everybody. I would definitely do my research before diving into something like this. Um, but between like the dice rolls to check successes, um, it feels a lot like the dice and root. You can roll, you know, you can have great odds and then still come out of it feeling uh, really, really bad bad. Um, but the other thing is, uh, John Company just has this amazing way of kind of rolling teach where you can kind of all jump in at the table and then you can kind of teach everybody what their small position in the company is. And then as kind of the whole table is going around and explaining their position in the company, it kind of like teaches itself after a couple of rounds. And I find Root to be the same way in that as well. But 
basically the reasons why it's similar that negotiation is very very similar to root but also the um the dice rolling mechanics and it just kind of you know cole has a very specific way of designing games and i feel like there are definitely kind of like little odes to them within each project um, so the next game is also a game by cole it is his other game by his other company uh whirly gig really good game. So the other one is PAX Pamir. Um, and honestly, in this list, I would almost put in that you could try other PAX games as well, like PAX Renaissance or PAX Viking. These games are also really, really fun and might give that vibe. The one that gives the most vibe of Root though, in my opinion, is going to be PAX Pamir because this game is once again, designed by Cole Worley, but also it just kind of has that same design philosophy that he does. He makes kind of like weird games. And I think that if you play it, you'll kind of see what I mean with this one specifically. I wouldn't say it's like Root. In fact, none of these I would say are like exactly one-to-one -one Root. They just kind of give vibes and they can scratch the itch when you're playing. So in Pax Pamir, you're going to be assuming the role of a 19th century Afghan leader uh, just after the collapse of the Durrani Empire. And basically in the game, you are not really con trolling or you're not in charge of any one type of military unit on the board. Instead, you're going to be switching allegiances between three of these different types of factions, whether it's the British, uh, the Russian or the Afghan pieces on the game board. And throughout, you're going to be switching your alliance. Um, and it, it, one of the, my favorite things about this game is once again, it's kind of all that table talk above the table and like, OK, now me and you are both kind of loyal to Russia right now. But are you going to leave me at the end? and switch over and start you know pumping up the British army those kinds of discussions are so much fun and the game really does have a way of kind of just feeling like root weirdly enough at least to me this is all to me obviously I think the reason why I love the game so much is the heavy emphasis on backstabbing each other like switching alliances last minute is really fun um, it's it's a really 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 good game and also even if you're working with someone you can still have spies infiltrate their tableau of cards and take out key cards from your opponents in order to make them weaker so there's just a ton of that kind of stuff in pax premiere now the next one is a bit of a lighter theme than the last four and a lighter in artwork as well i wanted to have a game that was really really easy to get into um and one of kind of the earliest games that really got me into semi the, the war gaming scene or maybe dudes on a map type of game this is going to be small world and the reason why i love small world so much is that it's a lot of bite-sized asymmetry so what I mean by that is that you actually do get a very asymmetric faction. You are basically pairing a race with a special ability and then you basically put them together like um, the field halflings or um, the mountain goblins. There's like tons of different combinations. These are randomized at the beginning of the game and you're basically bidding for these. And then as you go throughout the game, your kind of faction that you're going to be scoring points with and you're trying to score as many points as possible by taking over the small world, um, eventually you're just going to basically decline and when that happens you choose when to decline and then you can choose a new faction to take over and kind of start going from a new angle there so you're not stuck with one faction throughout the whole game in fact it's encouraged to at certain times decline and then be able to kind of come back as a stronger faction that's going to score you more points. Sticking with just one combination for too long is actually detrimental to you as you lose the ability to get as many um, of the, the faction pieces out. Small World is super simple to learn, but it's also super fun and those asymmetric factions are honestly a really fun puzzle to work out. I still enjoy this game every time I play it and it still does kind of get a little bit of that root itch scratched when I get it to the table. So next game is one of my favorite games of all time. That's going to be Dune. Um, this is the 1979 version or the 2019 Gale, Gale Force 9 version. Uh, this game is the best like six player game, um, asymmetric war game. I love it so much. It is so whack. It's not fair, which is one of the things that I love about it. It encourages alliances. You can dual win with other factions. It's set in the universe of Dune, so you've got all of the different houses to play with. Um, but it's it's interesting because like the main mechanics are the same, but then they have these crazy asymmetric abilities, mostly um, 
relating to how the faction gains spice or sometimes alternate win conditions. One of the ways that I try to sell this game to people is I say that, yeah, yeah, so you've got like a faction in the game that at the beginning of the game, they literally put together these cards and they say, okay, on this turn of the game, this faction is going to win. And then if that comes true, that faction wins instead of the faction that actually won. And it's just so much fun. Like what a wild ability. And it, you know, doesn't happen all the time, but when it does, it's like, what the heck just went on? Um, and just another example, like the Atreides house, they can actually carry a pen and a paper during the game and write down information. No other factions can do that because they have so much pre-knowledge and prescience of some of the game's elements, like the treachery cards. Dune is just an absolute blast. It's a war game with some heavy, crazy, wild, asymmetric abilities. Um, it's got a combat system that has inspired many games. Um, so this is definitely one that I would say definitely check out if you are interested in playing an asymmetric war game um, with a lot of negotiation. It's brutal. There's a lot of backstabbing. You can lose the game if you make just one too many mistakes very easily, but I still recommend it. So Next one on the list is going to be Vijaya Negra, and this is going to be a new game that is, um, it's not coin, it's uh, essentially called Irregular Conflict Series. Um, coin is counterinsurgency games, um, and I don't know if you know either of these, but basically Root is not a coin game, but it was kind of inspired by coin games. Um, the conflict of kind of a militant faction or a government, and then the insurgents that are going up against that government. Anyways, all that to say, Vijaya Negra is a game that is very asymmetric. It's um, at three players, uh, basically two or three or one, but uh, it is a game where you are going to be either the Bahmani Empire, the Delhi Sultanate, or the Vijayanagara Empire. So any of those, but they all do work very different. Like the Delhi actually starts with like positive points and throughout the game, they're trying to lose um, less points. So the more they kind of lose as the game goes on, the other two factions are kind of coming up while gaining points, which is very fun. Um, it's got a really simple combat system that involves dice similar to that of kind of root. Um, and so I kind of found that when I was playing this game, I was definitely seeing that this is a very highly asymmetric game. It has a very unique historical theme. It's not super hard to play. I would say it's definitely the most well done rule book in the kind of war gaming scene. I think it's really, really nice. Um, and on top of that, it kind of feels like with the negotiation, with the board control, with the buildings, with kind of how all of that stuff works, it really does kind of give that itch. Um, it really does kind of give that vibe of Root. And I highly, highly recommend that you at least check it out, do some research. You don't get very many games about medieval India. Um, and I think it's really, really cool. The game is dang good. There's gonna be a video that I'm gonna be releasing. So once that's out, I will definitely link it and it will definitely be in the description down below. All right, so I've talked about the coin series already, but that is going to be the next Basically, recommendation that I'm going to be giving you is coin series games in general, but I will kind of notate two here. First off, the easiest one to learn is Cuba Libre. If you are not into that theme, though, definitely do some research and figuring out maybe what's a theme that you care about or want to play around in. My favorite has been Falling Sky, which is kind of the... Um, kind of like the whole Gallic Wars era. So you, one player is gonna be playing Rome, um, and then there's three players playing different Gallic tribes. There's the Belgic tribes, the Adui, and the Avarni. Um, and there's some insurgency in there. So you've kind of got like your Woodland Alliance, but it's not the Woodland Alliance, right? You've got Rome, which is your Marquise de Cat. And the way that the game actually kind of works is pretty similar. Like the main 
kind of idea of these asymmetric factions kind of interlinking in a combat, scoring victory points and trying to win the game, that is so very much similar to that of Root. And so a lot of those discussions and negotiation it's kind of similar and it matches and I really, really dig that. I think um, Falling Sky and the coin series in general is a great place to go if you are looking for something that's not Root, but kind of like Root. Um, a lot of those kind of vibes and themes are going to feel similar. All right. Next up, we have got Scythe. Now, Scythe is a more Euro-y style game. This one kind of gives me vibes because of the asymmetric factions and because of basic board control. In no other way is this like Root. In fact, it's not really like Root, but for some reason, whenever I get it to the table, it still can scratch the itch because of the asymmetric faction. I love solving asymmetric game puzzles. And every time I get um, the faction mat with the board, I'm looking at my board and I'm thinking, okay, what am I supposed to do? How do I maximize my efficiency with this particular particular faction? Uh, and that is so much fun. The same kind of uh, combat that is used in Scythe is um, kind of the same one that came from Dune 1979, who started it. and. Game of Thrones also uses a very similar combat system. It's not dice based, it's card based, but, and unit based. Um, but Scythe is a great game. Um, it's more Euro-y, so there's gonna be victory points at the end. Um, and I just find the game itself to be very, very fun. I would definitely recommend checking it out. But the funny thing about Scythe is that you've probably already heard of it. And the last game that I'm going to talk to you about today is going to be called Maria. This is this has become one of my favorite games of all time. I think it's absolutely brilliant. It is a, another three player only game. It is kind of, it's very asymmetric in like starting positions. The negotiation and how that all goes is one of the most fun parts of this game. It's a very simple game. Like the way that you conquer stuff is by basically running over it. So it's very much a game that is driven by positioning. Theme wise, this is happening in the 1740s. So quite a bit ago, one player is going to be controlling Austria, which is just a ton of white pieces on the map. Another player is going to be France and Bavaria, which is the red and orange factions. And then the other player is going to be kind of a two-sided role. And this is my favorite role in the game. They play Prussia, which is Austria's enemy. And so they will actually be fighting against Austria with Prussia, but then they are also England and they will be Austria's ally and will be fighting against France. So they're, they're basically playing two different roles against both. And it sounds crazy, but trust me, it works. The board is split up into basically two different boards in the game. There's the Flanders board and the Bohemia board. And essentially one player is basically playing on both of those boards, pushing against both factions. And then those factions are pushing against those factions and each other and it's whack and it's wonderful and it's one of the most fun three player experiences you can have on the table. It gives me vibes of Root in so many different ways, especially the negotiation like I was saying, but another way is that the board is actually split into these sections that are the suits of a four deck of cards. And when you are battling in those areas, you can only use cards that match that suit. Does that sound similar to you? because it is, it has vibes. But also the deck of cards, they're multi-use, which does that sound similar to you as well? Not only can they be used for the combat section, but also for kind of the political phase. So you wanna hold on to those high value cards for multiple reasons. Very, very fun game Maria is. I absolutely dig it. Um, I, did, I just realized that there's actually a lot of like history games in this list. So if you're not a huge history fan, I'm so sorry that a lot of these games definitely will not apply to you, but but that is it for 10 games that I believe scratch the root itch. If you can't play root, these games, for me at least, have definitely kind of helped me to get a little bit of root at the table without actually playing it. Also, I started a Discord channel. I'm gonna have a link for it down below. I would highly appreciate it if you would at least check it out. We've got a cool community going over there with over 200 members at the moment because we just started it. I am so excited about it. We've already started uh, many, many async games um, and that's just awesome. So I'm playing async games pretty much every day with people. So I hope that you guys can go in there, join up, join the community, and uh, yeah, that is it for the video. Let us go ahead and drop the beat. <laughs> 